Welcome back to the report. Now, after damning reports from two human rights watchdogs and a documentary that provided video proof, Nigeria and Kenyan authorities have come under the spotlight. Has Africa's war on terror gone too far? Yasmin Khatun has more on this story. The Nigerian government has been terrorizing part of its population and committing possible war crimes in its battle against Boko Haram. This is according to a documentary broadcast last night. As the war on terror takes on a new front in Africa, human rights investigators believe that at least 4,000 people have died in military custody, with video footage showing the Nigerian army directly involved in the abuse of detainees. This comes as international human rights group Human Rights Watch has said there is strong evidence that Kenya's anti-terrorism police unit has carried out a series of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances. Research conducted between November and June documented a number of cases of unlawful killings and enforced disappearances carried out by the unit. The counter-terrorism police units in both Nigeria and Kenya have received significant support and training from the United States and the United Kingdom. But there are calls to have this reviewed and suspended. Human Rights Watch have said donors need to carry out their own investigations of these abuses and suspend their assistance to abusive forces or risk being complicit. In Nigeria, local militia who are purported to have carried out mass killings were armed and trained by the government. Nigeria's president, Goodluck Jonathan, hailed the new rising militia as national heroes. They adopted the title of Civilian Joint Task Force. The state government pays them salaries and has given them powers to detain anyone they want. Earlier this year, Boko Haram kidnapped more than 200 Nigerian schoolgirls in what went on to become an international campaign calling for their release. As a result, further pledges were made by the international community to support the fight against terrorism in Africa and against Boko Haram. Nigeria has been hailed by Britain as its key counter-terrorism partner in the region. But in response to the accusations in the reports and the documentary, the Nigerian embassy in London have said nothing of the sort is being perpetrated in Nigeria. In stamping out insurgency, some collateral damage will occur. As there is heavy evidence to imply civilians are being targeted in mass, is there now not a need for the international community to act? Yasmin Khatun, The Report, Islam Channel. Well, I'm joined now by Leslie Lefko, Deputy Director of the Africa Division at Human Rights Watch. Well, Leslie, we've seen uh, reports on what's going on in Nigeria and the atrocities committed by the authorities there. Uh, but you found similar things uh, going on in Kenya. Can you just tell us exactly what Human Rights Watch has discovered? Yes, thank you for having me on the program. Um, we've been doing research over the past nine months or so, looking at a number of cases where the Kenyan anti-terrorism police unit were responsible for killings and disappearances. So we documented uh, 20 cases, 10 killings and 10 disappearances of men, mostly young men in, in Nairobi and Mombasa, who were suspects in different crimes. And one by one, they were either killed or disappeared under very uh, similar circumstances, either uh, when they were attacked by anti-terrorism police and other forces, um, or when they came into into encounters with them. And, and, and most of these young men had received death threats from members of the force before they died. So there's a lot of circumstantial as well as witness evidence. Well, that I mean, donor, donor governments, including the U.S., is giving money to these special police units. I mean, can they really claim that they didn't know what's going on? Are they just turning a blind eye to this? It's hard for them to say that they didn't know what's going on because we're, ours is not the first report. There's been other reports by Kenyan human rights groups who've, who've made some of these allegations. I think our report cements the concerns and the U.S. government will really have to address these concerns now because this kind of abuse is not uh, improving security for Kenyans in the least. And what's the U.S. reaction been to your report so far? Have they said something? So far I haven't seen um, a direct reaction. We understand that there are 
uh, there's a lot of attention to the report within different parts of the U.S. government and a, and a heavy discussion that's ongoing. Under U.S. law, the U.S. is obligated to suspend assistance to abusive security forces. So they can't just ignore this evidence. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, let's now come back to the studio where we have Mahmoud Kamara, who's the Nigeria researcher from Amnesty International, and James Schneider, chief editor of Think Africa Press. Let me come to you, for James, on the Kenyan issue before we move on to Nigeria. I mean, why hasn't the Kenyan government done more to try and clean up its act? I mean, is it incompetent? Well, it's not just incompetence. I mean, the, if you look at the general security policy of the Kenyan government, especially in relationship to al-Shabaab, it has been government policy to um, directly target the Somali community living within Kenya, whether those are refugees or Somali Kenyans. So it's not a case, the Kenyan government cannot argue that these are sort of rogue units or they're operating outside the law. There's been direct policy to engage in what appear to be rights abuses. I'm not referring to the, the 20 specific cases in this Human Rights, report, uh, Human Rights Watch report, but um, the uh, mass, arrests, mass arrests and placing um, suspects uh, seemingly with little evidence in detention in the football stadium, the same football stadium that, that the President Kenyatta used for his inauguration. So this is a pattern of activities, not a, not a sort of one-off or a rogue thing. And uh, coming on to Nigeria now, I mean, are Western governments just allowing the Nigerian police and North army to behave like this, or do they, is it possible they don't know what's going on? Well, it's hard for anybody to deny um, lack of knowledge of what is happening in Nigeria, uh, considering the fact that there have been lots of attention following the abduction of the uh, over 200 um, schoolgirls um, from Chibok. And uh, we, we think the international community has responsibility to ensure that um, alleged crimes um, against humanity and potential war crimes in Nigeria are actually um, investigated. And we think that the um, international community, especially key um, governments like the UK government and US government, who consider Nigeria as a very strong partner in their counterterrorism efforts in Africa, to step up their efforts in ensuring that the Nigerian security forces take lawful measures to not only follow due processes, but also respect Nigeria's international human rights obligations. And, and what, is, what does the British government, for example, say? Do, do they say um, everything's going well in Nigeria in terms of the security well, issues? Well, in, in some meetings that um, some members of the British government have had with Amnesty International, they have expressed um, their concerns and uh, that they're going to raise some of these concerns with um, the Nigerian government. But these are um, simply things that they say on the under those circumstances, and we think we, they, they need to do more rather than just um, expressing rhetorics. We think they need to step up their efforts in ensuring that they publicly um, condemn these acts of um, war crimes, and they, they publicly urge the Nigerian authorities to ensure that those who have been um, accused or suspected of committing these crimes are brought to justice in fair trials. Well, I mean, it's great that Amnesty International is bringing up these issues, but I mean, the Nigerian public as a whole, aren't they? pretty happy with what the Nigerian army is doing, and at least they wouldn't be raising the kind of concerns you are. They may be unhappy because they haven't found these girls. Well, they, they, they have been outrage in Nigeria, among Nigerian um, civil society, as well as the ordinary people in Nigeria, especially from the north of, of Nigeria, where people are mostly affected, civilians. The, the humanitarian situation, which is not often mentioned in many um, public discussions, is huge. There's a lot of people who have been forcibly um, displaced from their homes, food, um, um, sh high food um, shortage. The army, you mean? This as a result of the general conflicts and the, the number. The, the, in terms of the um, acts and abuses of violations by the army, you have a lot of extrajudicial executions, a lot of enforced disappearances, a lot of deaths in military custody, and people are outraged by this. And people have been expressing concerns in various quarters. But they're also the outraged, obviously, by Boko Haram. So, I of mean, course. So people just feel they're victims they are, of two, the two armed groups. People are trapped in a cycle of violence perpetrated by both Boko Haram and the Nigerian security forces, and they think that there is not um, a kind of a genuine political will from the Nigerian um, government to ensure that they bring this situation under control, and uh, they also think that the Nigerian government needs um, some kind of support, some kind of pressure from the international community to ensure that they are sincere and that they are um, accountable in their activities, especially in their efforts to um, re respond to Boko Haram's attack. And uh, the, the ordinary people of Nigeria, especially in the north, think that um, they, are, they are left on their own 
to, to fend off the, um, the, the activities of Boko Haram as well as the Nigerian security forces. Well, what about um, you know, before the Boko Haram situation became as bad as it is now? Was there also already a lot of allegations against the way the Nigerian army dealt with other conflicts in other part of the, uh, parts of the country? And in other parts of West Africa as well. I mean, the uh, Nigerian military was the, led the West African force fighting in Liberia uh, during that civil war and was um, accused of you know, uh, many acts of um, basically being a party to the conflict and engaging in some of the same kind of activities that some rebel forces were and other human rights abuses. So the Nigerian military, um, I mean, it has some form in this, although I, I think we should view the way in which the civilian joint task force has operated, which is essentially uh, local um, uh, self-defense groups uh, you know, initially constituted as vigilantes, which have then been empowered through rhetoric and slightly also indeed by the Nigerian military. That should be viewed in a slightly different context to Nigeria's patchy at best uh, historical human rights record in the last 20 years. I mean, of course, if we go back in history a little bit further, then we get to the Nigerian Civil War, the Biafran War, and of course that's littered with some absolutely appalling human rights abuses. Well, thank you both for coming in. We're going to turn now to the issue of uh, H the HSBC Bank and the way it's been closing a number of accounts, particularly of Muslim organizations and Muslim individuals. As a result, the affected victims have called for boycotts, protests, and, and have said that they will terminate their own accounts with the bank.